We have had a couple episodes in the past where I've gone and bought some old computer lots off gov deals. Well, today we are stepping things up a bit because instead of just buying computers, I bought a car. <laughs> I bought a 2011 police interceptor, uh, Crown Victoria, off gov deals for $2160, I believe, uh, plus a 12.5% auction fee. We had to go down to Raleigh and get it, bring it back, and we're gonna see what kind of condition it is in. Uh, and hopefully on the way, we don't break down. All right, so we're about to leave here and I have everything that we need in the back of the car. So I got duct tape for the holes in the roof of the car. Uh, I'm going to put some new duct tape over those holes before we leave because it's a 200 mile trip and I'm pretty sure it's going to be raining the entire time back. Um, so I'm going to replace all the duct tape that was originally on the roof. Um, we have a jumper box right here because I'm pretty sure the battery is going to be dead. Tape to put the trip permit on the window. And speaking of the trip permit, this folder has all the paperwork. So it has the uh, GovDeals buyer certificate and the trip permit as well, which I need to get the seller to sign when I get there. We have a mini air pump right here because I'm not sure if the tires are going to have air in them when we get there. They did take the nice tires off and put some old tires on the car. Um, hopefully they hold air, but if they don't, I got this just in case. And then we have two gallons of gas, which is enough to get that Crown Vic about 45 miles um, to the nearest gas station. So it's raining. I'm going to close the door here, get in the car, and we're going to head down to Raleigh. It took us just under three and a half hours to make it to the Raleigh Fleet Management Facility. I did all the usual auction paperwork, got the title, and had the trip permit signed, and then the man named Tyler, seen to the left, walked us to the car. Now, Tyler was awesome probably one of the nicest people I have talked to while picking up an auction asset. He insisted on helping us get the car running, he brought out his own jump boxes, and pretty much did all of the work. It was great. He was so nice. And though it did take a while, eventually the car cranked over. Come on, just a little bit more. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So this thing runs. We are ready to go. It's running fine. It's got oil in it. Uh, just put two gallons of gas in it. So we got to head to the gas station and fill the rest of it up. Um, you guys saw the engine start for the first time. So this should be interesting. Let's see if this uh, car will make the 200 mile drive back to Virginia Beach from Raleigh. So she was running a little low on oil, so I uh, went into sheets, grabbed a quart of uh, 5W20 and uh, tossed that into the engine and we should be good for the trip home. Um, I need to replace the oil once, you know, we actually get home. I'm going to replace a lot of things on this car. All the fluids are going to be flushed uh, pretty much except for the transmission fluid because they just did that at 92,000 miles according to the maintenance record, so that's good. So now we have our 200 mile journey ahead of us so let's see if this thing uh, will make it back and if it doesn't make it back without any incident then there shouldn't be any video clips i hope that i do not have to record again until i get home because if i do have to record again that means that the car broke down inside the road uh and that would not be good obviously 200 miles later and we are finally home now i'm not going to film for too long because i am uh getting tired now that was a very long ordeal i think in total that took eight hours to actually go down get the car do the paperwork and then come back uh coming back was a bit of a pain because traffic was absolutely terrible but the car made it just fine for all 200 miles i didn't have one issue with it i thought the key was stuck in the door i'm like ah, oh, didn't have one issue with it i can't get the key out so let's get in here and I'll show you something interesting. It is completely dark right now, so give me a sec, guys. All right, and we'll pop that light on and close the door. So I'll go over more of the details on the car tomorrow, what works, what doesn't, what needs to be uh, replaced and repaired. For the most part, this car is in really good condition, but I do need to do some work on it before I take it to get inspected. Um, as you can see, the battery is working. Let's test that battery and crank this bad boy up. There we go. Beautiful. So, yep, as you guys can see, a little bit of life left in that battery. Uh, cranks the car just fine. And if we check out the miles we have on here, that's 103,275 miles. And I didn't know the hours um, going into this. It was not listed on the 
um, gov deals listing for this vehicle so we'll take a look at the hours and you can see that this vehicle has oh sorry that's not the hours this vehicle has 6,386 hours which is pretty high um, for a car like this now usually these police interceptors range between 4,000 to 6,000 um, a little bit on the high side here especially for a 2011 model um, but once again the car does appear to be running without any issues right now and I'm probably jinxing myself but you know despite the high hours this thing is still chugging along just fine so I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll take a closer look at this car I finally got permission to park the car in the garage. Unfortunately, it is a little bit dark in here. I tried to set up some studio lights to make things a little brighter, um, but I only have two of them, so they're only gonna do so much. It's gonna be a little dark at some points in the video, and I do apologize for that in advance. I would take the car outside, but it's just pouring right now. It's been pouring for the past three to four days, and it's supposed to rain um, for the next three days, so you know, it, I'm not gonna get a chance to really bring this car outside and film. If you're wondering what that toothbrush is for, just kind of sing on the car. I use that to clean uh, some electrical contacts uh, along with some WD-40 because I did replace the battery. I went to Walmart this morning with my dad and surprisingly, my dad actually offered to buy this battery. So that was $50 saved for me. Really appreciate uh, my dad coming out here and uh, helping me with this project. Um, he's actually pretty excited about this car. He really likes this car and he's been helping me get it up to spec um, for a state inspection. Now I do have it insured right now, so that's one step done. So insured, then I gotta get the state inspection um, and then we actually gotta get this thing registered. So in order to pass inspection, one, I had to replace some of the uh, lights here. So when I was driving down from, or driving up from North Carolina, I realized that this headlight right here was not functional. Uh, it was not working. I went to Walmart and bought a bulb to replace it. And it turned out um, that the bulb uh, that was already in the car was not connected for some reason. So I reconnected it. That light works now. The running light right here uh, does not work. So I got to replace that bulb. All the lights on that side work. And there's one more light in the back um, that I'm currently in the process of repairing. So that is the uh, third brake light in the back window. And it turns out that I'm not sure why they did this. It might have just been um, for a piece of police equipment. Um, but they cut one of the wires. You can see it right there. They cut one of the wires for that back brake light. So I'm pretty sure I need this to be functional in order to pass inspection. Um, there is a wiring harness in the trunk right under here, and I'll show you guys uh, that when I open the trunk. I can't really do that right now because this car is gigantic. It barely fits in the garage. This is about the same size as our um, Ford Expedition extended version. So this thing is just massive. This is a really, really big car. Um, the holes on the car are going to be plugged um, with some plastic plugs. I got those coming in from Amazon. Uh, and I'm gonna put some silicone uh, seal around them so you know no water leaks in uh, because this tape is starting to go. I don't think this is really watertight at all. And I'm hoping that no water leaks in there while this car was just sitting in the lot. For the most part, everything looks, you know, pretty clean. Um, there's no leakage around the um, valve covers. I don't think there's any oil leaking out from uh, under the engine. Um, there does appear to be a little bit of oil right here, but that was actually for me. <laughs> Uh, when I put that quart of oil in the car yesterday in order to get it uh, from Raleigh to here, I spilled a little around the oil cap and that kind of dissipated um, all around here. So that was my fault. It is not leaking from the oil cap. Come around this side. There's even less space over here. There's our uh, temporary registration in the window. And as far as cosmetics go, this car's in really good condition. You can see some impressions um, from the decals they had on the car. I might be able to buff these out if I scrub hard enough. Um, the paint is in very good condition. I mean, if the car wasn't such a weird paint scheme, there would really be no need to paint this car. The paint is excellent. I mean, the only flaw I found in the paint is right here in the back where they had the antenna mounted. You can see that there is a little bit of rust from where the motion of the antenna wore away the paint. Um, I can't really get that duct tape off right now. It's like this duct tape has just disintegrated so badly that it won't peel off. Like you kind of got to scrape it off. Um, but that's the only blemish in this paint that I have found. The, the paint's in excellent condition. So I'm probably going to keep this paint for a little bit. 
I mean, I'm not embarrassed to drive around like this. Now back to passing state inspections. So we got to take care of the lighting. I should have all that done by tomorrow. Got to buy one more bulb from Walmart and of course fix their wiring back there. Uh, shouldn't take more than a day. Easy job. Uh, the second thing I got to take care of are the tires. These tires are in very, very, very rough shape. I mean, they are Goodyear Eagles, so these were decent tires at one point, but you can see that it's it's bad. It's pretty bad, and the ones on the front are a little bit better. Yeah, there's a little bit more uh, tread on those, and they wore a little more evenly than the back tires did. Um, but they still need to be replaced. So I bought tires from Walmart um, for I think 280 bucks total, nothing fancy, just some cheap tires um, to get this thing through inspection. And uh, I'm gonna get those installed on Thursday because I want this thing inspected by next weekend. And I'm just gonna have them change the oil too because it's only like 20 bucks um, and it's already gonna be in the shop. So might as well just, you know, do it then uh, to be safe because once again, uh, this thing is a little bit low on oil. Oil is a bit old, um, and it could definitely use a, you know, oil change. And Walmart's a quick and easy way to get that done. And here's a better look at the inside. You can see that, yes, the seats are pretty dirty, but the upholstery itself is in good shape, so that could use a good steam vac, and it should take most of those stains out. There is a small rip on the driver's seat right there, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to sew it shut so it doesn't get any bigger, and I'm going to put seat covers over both the front seats, because that's what I usually do with my cars anyway. Uh, the floor uh, is vinyl. I'll be it very dirty, so that's going to be cleaned as well. I'm going to add a center console uh, in the middle right there, just you know, so I have somewhere to put all my stuff. Um, there is one 12 volt plug down here. I think you guys can barely see it. It's right there. And then you can see our vinyl back seats, which are in very good condition. No rips, no tears. Uh, the back is in excellent shape, besides the fact that the uh, doors do not open from the inside. There's three more cosmetic things I want to hit on. So the first one is the steering wheel. The steering wheel is pretty worn down. Um, I was going to put a wheel cover on this anyway, so not a big deal. Uh, the headliner right here, just in this area. This is the only place where this is happening, but it seems like it's starting to sag down just a little bit, ever so slightly. Uh, and the rest of the headliner is in excellent condition. So I might try to fix this by just putting some glue to kind of hold it in place up here. Um, for the time being so it doesn't get any worse and also the uh, window trim slash rubber seals Do have one or two chunks missing out of them on this side and on that side as well So when I take this into Mako to get painted uh, I might have them re Replace this little piece just to make sure no water is running down in there. Oh, yeah I know this is gonna be a big question. So yes, the spotlight does work. I forgot to mention that there we go So that's going to be about it for this video. I promise you guys look at the trunk and I'm not one to lie. So let's take a look at the trunk. Whoa, what was that? Something just, oh, I forgot I left the toothbrush on the trunk. I thought I just broke something. All right, we're going to put that up there. So you can see the spare tire right here, which is in decent condition. They gave us a okay spare tire. Um, and just look at how much room is in this trunk. I was blown away when I opened this trunk. I was like, there is no way. There is just so much space in the back here. And you can see some of the uh, miscellaneous wiring up here um, that we're going to have to uh, troubleshoot and find the correct wire to connect back up to the brake light. 
Uh, once again, I don't think it's going to be too difficult, but I'm going to have to break out a multimeter, and it's probably going to take like 30 minutes to go through the motions and actually get everything working. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to post the entire maintenance record for this vehicle um, at the end of this video. I'll just scroll down through it. It is pretty lengthy, so it's probably going to eat up like an extra five minutes of this video. But I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't get to see. This car has had an interesting uh, history, and it has had a lot done to it. So it was in a front-end collision. Uh, they had to do a lot of repairs on the uh, cooling system. I believe they had to replace the AC blower fan and the AC condenser as well because of that collision. Um, you can't really tell just by just looking at it. I mean, I see no evidence of a front-end collision on this car. It also has some other new parts, such as a new alternator and a new uh, cooling fan motor. Can't really see in there because both of my studio lights have died. Um, yeah, but if you want to see the full maintenance history of that car, once again, I've said it like three times already, it will be at the end of this video. Now, that was a look. Whoa, that was a look at this uh, 2011 Crown Victoria Police Interceptor that I bought from auction for a 2160 plus a 12.5% auction fee. Now I know some people believe that it is pretty high um, price to pay for a car like this. Uh, do keep in mind that in the Southeast, you know, these cars easily go for three grand to four grand. The 2011 models do anyway. You could get a 2005 model for around 1500. It's a lot cheaper to get these cars uh, up in the Northeast. Unfortunately, I checked out some of those cars and all of them were way, 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 way too far away um, for me to actually be able to go up and get them and drive them down. Um, I was even nervous about driving this thing down. I mean, we had a 200 mile journey uh, in a car that I bought online. So it's really nerve wracking uh, to actually do that because you don't know if you're going to get stranded on the side of the road. You know, any, anything could happen with these cars unless you actually go and inspect them in person and with GovDeals online auctions, that's really not always the case.